What's going on everybody? So there is a question that I have found myself getting asked quite a bit or at least responding to um, some misunderstandings about Galvo. What is a Galvo? Well, this right here is a Galvo, this right here is a Galvo, and this right here is a Galvo. But all three of these are different lasers. So hang on tight and let's talk more. All right, so here is my setup and all my Galvos. So to start things off, let's talk about what is a Galvo, like the big question. Well, this right here is the Galvo. So Galvo is the platform. So it is how the laser beam is sent down to your material. Inside of here, there is the beam comes in and there's a set of mirrors that then send the laser down through the lens and focuses it at your material. So the, these two mirrors, they shake, they move, and they direct the beam to where it needs to go based off of your design. So this right here, the head, that is Galvo. That's what that means. So what are all three of these? Well, these are three distinct machines. So this right here is a CO2 Galvo, 60 watt. This is my 100 watt fiber. And this is my new five watt UV laser. So the most common, the most common one that people see out there and don't under necessarily understand that it is a Galvo is the fiber. Fiber lasers, they are a Galvo laser. I often see people saying, oh yeah, I want to get a Galvo. And I believe that they're talking about a CO2 Galvo because that's how people name it. They say, oh, a CO2 Galvo. Nobody ever says, oh, I'm going to get a fiber Galvo. So keep in mind, CO2, fiber, UV. Those are three platform or three laser sources that run on a Galvo platform. Outside of that, you also could put a diode on a Galvo. Uh, for example, I'll take a picture and put it right here. Uh, you can have the X-Tool F1 Ultra that is also a Galvo. It is a combination of the diode and fiber. So this guy right here is also included in that. So the next question that usually follows is why so many? Why are there so many different types of Galvo lasers? And let's start by talking about the UV. So UV probably has the widest range of materials that it can interact with. We'll just say interact. Um, it can mark surface on metal. It can mark and even get deeper on wood and other organic materials. It can do plastics. It can do the whole gamut of things where the other two can't always do all those things. So UV has the biggest range of materials it can work with, probably the most universal laser that is out there. But it is one of the least common that people are using because the other two process their niche materials so well. And one where this one is supposed to really shine is for glass. It, it comes up with a, a much more a frosted look than what happens with your CO2s. So the CO2 almost uh, breaks the surface and makes it really rough. And as you interact with the glass, some of those shards can come out, but UV is supposed to have a lighter touch. And I'm gonna do some more testing and do a video on glass work with the UV, because that was the reason that I got it, was to be able to really hone in the glass work. So if we come over and we'll talk about the CO2, so CO2 Galvo is gonna work with the same materials that your CO2 gantry layers, lasers work with. So we're talking about wood, you know, we're talking about the powder coated tumblers, pretty much anything that you're gonna throw in your CO2 gantry machine, this thing is gonna do the same thing. It just has a smaller platform and it's going to run faster. So all of these machines, we're talking about getting, you know, up to about 4,000 millimeters a second. Granted, I've never ran them at 4,000 millimeters a second. I'm pretty often sitting in like a thousand to two thousand, 
as I run a lot of these machines. Uh, just like your gantry machines, you're gonna slow down and get darker, like for the CO2 Galvo. Slow down, a little bit lower power, and it helps really get that dark, rich color out of materials like wood. So same principles apply, but these guys are running a lot faster, especially the CO2 Galvo, because it uses that metal RF tube in it. It is reacting so much faster than what your glass tubes do, and it makes it so it's much more compact and you don't have this big old long glass tube hanging out somewhere. Even then, this thing, it still sticks back pretty far and that's why it's in the corner, to give it a little bit more room to stick out the back. So again, CO2, Galvo, it is going to do the same materials that you do on your CO2 gantry machines. So now we step over to the fiber. So fiber, we're talking about metal. Like that's, that's where fiber usually shines a lot, but granted metal, I've used it on leatherette. I've also used it on slate. Um, there's a variety of different things. I, I mean, rocks, I'm trying to think, running through my head, all the different things that fiber can do. Um, but I'll, I'll list some stuff in the description of reference materials that you know, say, hey, this is what a UV can touch, this is what a Galvo can, or a fiber can touch, and this is what the CO2 can touch. But fiber, mainly you're thinking coins, you're thinking gun slides, you're thinking like all of the metal stuff, that's where you see this guy pop up a lot. But it can do other things. I, I've run a lot of leatherette for like leatherette things, le leatherette bracelets, I think I even have one here, um, this guy right here. That was all done on the fiber. So small platform, able to do things quick and especially quick changeover. Cause most of these guys come with like a foot pedal. Sometimes because I got this big old tool chest in front of this that has all of my laser blinks in it. I usually use the foot pedal as a hand pedal. I'll just kind of like smash it um, and get it going again. But I mean, that's like this guy right here. So it just, clicks down and it starts again, starts again, starts again. Where you get a lot of benefit out of using Galvo machines is a lot of batch work and using jigs. I've done other videos that I post this one right here talking about jigs with your, it was with fiber that I did it with, but you could do the same principle on all of these machines and setting up jigs so that way you can do a whole batch of products really quick and then swap them out hit the button again and it goes. So I have all of these machines running off of one laptop. So you can set up multiple instances of say Lightburn, that's what I use, but Lightburn and you can use the EasyCAD 2, uh, depending on what you have, it may be EasyCAD 3 if it's a 3D head, but these ones all run off of either Lightburn or EasyCAD 2. So I hope this clears up some of the uh, misunderstandings about Galvo um, and it helped you learn something today. If this video was helpful and you liked it, please like the video. Also subscribe, hit the bell so that way you get notified next time I have another video come out. And also in the description, I'll put a lot of the stuff that you need to, to look into these a little bit more. And I'll also put a way or a couple of ways that you can contact me and we can talk a little bit more about Galavos and what might fit you best for your situation and the materials that you're gonna be working with. So as always, thank you so much and we will see you on the next one.